Hi, everybody. Um, this is just a quick off the cuff video to uh, at least give you a little bit of an idea of what's going on with the new mesh export options. Um, so I'm switching to Airtight Final because that's the only mode that will give you the new parts and material groups output. Then I select Dupe and Convert, and now we get this form. Uh, that asks us if we want to duplicate original. You're familiar with that. You just leave that checked. That's pretty much what we've decided you always want to do. Merge vertices is used to make sure you get a single unified mesh, airtight mesh. And create material groups. Of course, that's what we're looking at, so we want to go ahead and do that. Uh, the rest of it is as, is as before. Um, you name the output mesh. And uh, mesh fusion churns for a while, and there is a progress bar now. Uh, wasn't there when I did this video. It will help if it's a very complex file. But anyway, after it's done, um, you can go to lists and polygons and part, and here you will see a list of parts. And each of these parts is an individual what we call patch in the uh, mesh fusion model. And that's a patch is a, is a group of polygons surrounded by a loop of seams or strips. And you can see it only goes to the edge of the strip. It doesn't go into the strip. Of course, you can easily move it outward into that strip just by expanding the selection. Um, and speaking of which, it also creates these materials. Now, the material uh, parts are, are um, somewhat different in that they go all the way out to the middle of the seam. They're also different in the sense that they represent all of the patches that were created by a particular source mesh. There's that halfway through the seam thing I was talking about. So here you can see all of these surfaces came from a single source mesh, a kind of disc-shaped mesh. All of these surfaces came from a big trimming ellipsoid that intersected several meshes, but again, all of these surface contributions came from a single source mesh. Obvious with something like that little knob there. And the name of each of these uh, material polygon groups is, matches the name of the uh, source mesh from which they came. Uh, we are not yet inheriting materials from the source objects um, that will, source meshes, that will come along uh, when we get UVs implemented. Uh, but for now, at least, you can easily get to those surfaces. And of course, if you go to the uh, shader tab, you will see the material groups listed there and you are free to go in and edit those and change the material for those particular polygons. Um, there's one more um, part group that I forgot to mention that's really kind of uh, interesting and will come in useful for some modeling applications. So if we go back to the mesh here and look at parts, there is this fusion item 2 which was inherited from the items name, the fusion items name, uh, strips. And that selects all of the polygons that are that belong to all of these strips. And uh, that's something that I used extensively in all the scripting that I did based around uh, Grobato generated meshes. And there are really some fascinating things that can be done there. In fact, I've just uh, uploaded a video to the Tips and Techniques section of the uh, Fusion support site. Uh, take a look at that and you'll see some of the things that you can do right now uh, using these strip selections. And uh, again, things will get uh, slicker uh, going forward with the next update, but there's some uh, great things you can do right now. All right, thanks.